Paint Artists, it's Mrs. Glum here saying I'm super excited that you've joined me for paint night. I want to take a minute to thank the PTO for sponsoring this awesome virtual event because they're the ones that got everybody your awesome art kits. In the next video, you're going to see a bunch of different techniques that you can use to make your painting super awesome and personalized because we know that art that comes from your heart is the best kind of art that there is. And remember three things. One, although this paint is washable, you should probably not wear your best clothes when you're painting. Two, you wanna make sure that you're painting on a flat surface. That's not the rug and that's not your bed. Please make sure you're at a nice flat hard surface like a kitchen table. And last but not least, it's always a good idea to put some paper underneath your canvas when you're working in case you paint over your canvas onto the table for easy cleaning. All right, I hope you're excited. I'm super excited. Let's get paint. Okay, let's take a look at all the items you got in your paint night set. You got a canvas. You also got your three primary colors plus white. We also provided you with a one inch foam brush for big areas. Also, this paintbrush is great because it has a flat side for wider areas and thinner areas when you turn it that way. You're gonna be using this paper plate as your palette for your paints, so let's get started with some color mixing. First things first, do not use that foam brush for color mixing. We're gonna use your small brush. You're gonna need water and a paper towel. Take that white and put it to the side for now. We're only gonna use our primary colors to start to start mixing our secondary colors. I like to put a little bit of paint on my palette to begin. And as you can see, I'm washing my brush, but even when I put it in the water, some of that paint's still in the ferrule. Use that paper towel to clean it well. Here I am going to put all three of my primary colors onto my paper plate palette, just in a triangle form, because you're gonna see I'm gonna use the space in between to start mixing my secondary colors. Mixing colors is not as simple as red plus yellow equals orange. In fact, yellow is such a weak color that we have to put three yellows together with one red to equal one orange. So let's take one scoop of red. Don't forget to wash that brush in between. And then using my formula, I'm going to take three scoops of yellow and mix it in with that red. One, two, and three. Let's mix it together and see what happens. Wow, that's a beautiful orange. Okay, let's make a nice green. For green, we're gonna need three yellows and one blue. One, two, three yellows, plus one blue. Look at that gorgeous green. Here we go, let's try to make some purple now. Now you can make purple by adding two blues and one red to make a more indigo type of purple. Let's see what happens. One scoop of red and two scoops of blue. Let's mix that together. Although brown is not in the rainbow, it's still a beautiful neutral color to put into our paintings. I'm showing you the opposite colors from each other. Red, green, yellow, purple, and orange and blue. To make brown, all you have to do is mix two complementary colors. So today we're gonna use a little bit of green and a little bit of red. Let's see what happens. Wow, look at that really nice brown. I think it's time to paint. Hold your horses. Let's make a few more colors before we start to paint. Let's make some tints. Adding white to a normal color can make it look different. Let's see what happens. When you add white to a regular color, it lightens the color, making a pastel or a muted version of that color. Look how beautiful these are. We can add these colors to our paintings. That's awesome. Don't forget to be a color scientist and create your own colors because we know that artists are always trying to find new ways to create. How to use your paint brushes. I've given you two different types of paint brushes. The foam brush is wider, which means it can cover bigger spaces faster. The smaller brush has two ways you can hold it. Here I am gonna use my brush using it the thin skinny way, and then this way, the flat way, you can see the difference in the thickness of the lines. Look how thick that one inch brush, big difference. Don't forget, you're the artist. You should experiment with mark making. See how different each brush works by holding it at different angles. 
I'm going to show you six different painting techniques that you can use tonight with your paint kit. Remember, my friends, there's no such thing as making a mistake in art. So I hope you have fun with whatever technique you choose. Make sure you watch all the videos so you know which one you want to choose. Let's get started. First choice, rainbow canvas. My friends, this is the easiest one. We're gonna use our one inch foam brush to make big wide strokes. Don't forget to wash your brush in between colors. It can get messy and we don't wanna mix the colors. As you can see, this brush works very fast. I like to pull a little bit of my orange into my yellow and a little bit of my red into my orange and so on because what I'm doing is creating a gradient and an intermediate color is appearing. Look how cool this looks. I think I'm gonna do the same with the green and make a nice lime green. Ooh, yes, awesome. Ta-da! Let's make another rainbow canvas, but this time let's use our smaller brush. As we know, with a smaller brush, we can control it better and make smaller lines. I decided to go with a zigzag line, but my friends, you can use any line that you like. Curvy, curly, dotted, it's up to you. You're the artist. I combined all of my colors and repeated my line over and over again, getting rid of the white spaces. Look how cool this is. Sometimes artists decide to limit the colors they use. For this one, we're going to use just our cool colors, which are purple, blue, and green. I started by drawing a wide spiral and painting it with the purple. After I was done with the purple, I sandwiched the purple with blue on both sides of that spiral. With the remaining white spaces, I covered it in green. Ooh, that's a cool looking cool painting. Take a look at this cool shapes painting I did. I first started with a pencil and drawing big shapes on my canvas. Make sure that you're using different types of shapes. Also, as you draw the shapes, make sure they overlap and create new shapes when they're drawn on top of other shapes. That's a lot of geometric shapes. Let's add an organic one just for funsies. Now that my shapes are drawn, let's start to paint them. I'm going to use my cool palette, but also my cool tints. Let's see how those tints really liven this painting and make it super bright. Wow, that's beautiful. Add a few outlines and you're done. Let's switch gears and use our warm colors with this warm scribble painting. We'll use red, orange, yellow, and pink. Let's start by drawing a scribble, but that one's too small and too tight. Let's make sure our scribble is wide and lazy. When you go to draw your scribble on your canvas, make sure it's wide and touches each side of your canvas. As these lines intersect, they create interesting shapes. Next, what I like to do is I like to paint those interesting lines that I just created, those scribble lines, with a different warm color. And now I'm going to paint in all these new interesting shapes that I made with my new colors. My Aiken artists know that abstract art means to play with line, shape, and color. So let's get started. We're going to use our foam brush for this one using red, orange, yellow, and pink. I'm just going to dip my brush into one color and start dabbing away onto my canvas. I'm going to wash my brush between each color to make sure that each color stays nice and pure. But as I get rid of all the white spots, these paints are going to start to mix together, creating new colors. Dude, that looks awesome. I saved the messiest one for last. This one is found object fun because we're not using paintbrushes to apply paint for this one. We're using fun objects from around your house. Please ask your parents permission to be able to go around your house and find things with interesting textures that would make interesting marks on your paper. I looked for things that had texture and I thought would make really cool shapes. Legos are awesome for printing. I started by cutting the sponge into an interesting shape and then I used my clothespin so I wouldn't get my fingers too dirty when I used it to paint. Once you get all of your fun printing and painting supplies ready, let's dive in. It's as simple as putting your object into the paint and pressing it onto your canvas. Sometimes you might wanna experiment with how you put it onto the canvas. I found that by twisting this fun pluff ball, it made a really cool uh, texture as well. Don't forget to have fun. Add some lines, create new ways to use these items and see how they combine to make fun and interesting shapes. 
I use that foam brush to help apply some paint to other objects. Ooh, that's a fun thing to spin. When using string, you have to apply a lot of paint. So I used that foam brush once again. After I got my string super, super gooey with paint, I picked it up and I let it fall in an interesting way onto my painting. Then I used the pressure from my fingers to press it into the canvas the way that I like that line. Then I lift it up. Ooh, that's a cool line I made. I think I'll do it again. Don't forget those Legos are super fun for printing. You can print these over and over and over again. You can also use the other side. What's the coolest thing to paint with? How about your fingers? Remember, too much sometimes is too much. So just using the small parts of your fingers can give you a little bit of control while still having fun. The paints that came in your paint kit are totally okay for to put on your hands. We've made some pretty cool looking paintings here tonight. If you like your painting as is, keep it and let it dry overnight. But if you would like to go a step further, you can take the paintings that you made and use it as a base to use a stencil to even further personalize your art. I'm gonna show you how to use those stencils right now. Included in your art kit tonight was a packet of papers that had some simple shapes, some alphabet, my favorite mythical creatures, of course, and some silhouettes that you can use. Also is a blank piece of paper to encourage you to make your own stencil, because as we know, art that comes from your heart is the best art that there is. I'm going to be using the star stencil, but first I have to cut it away from the rest of these papers. I'm pretty careful to make sure that the white paper around the shape that I'm going to use is intact because I'm going to be able to use that scrap as a stencil as well. Make sure that when you're cutting out your shape, it is using one continuous line. Now I have my star, which I can use for masking. That means I can put it on top of the painting, then use my one inch brush and paint everywhere around it. And then when I lift the star, the painting that's there will continue to be in the middle or I can instead make my scrap into a stencil. Putting that stencil on top, I could paint inside the stencil, making a solid star in the middle, and then having the, rem the remaining painting as the background. For this one, I've decided I'm gonna use the star as a masking agent. Watch what happens when I paint around the star using my one inch brush. I'm careful to keep my fingers in place as I paint around it because you don't want it to shift. When I lift it up, my original painting is revealed. Super cool. You're going to see me in the next few steps use both the ways of masking and using stencils. Pretty awesome results. It's going to be really important as you start to do the mythical creatures to make sure that you have a parent to help you do some very precise cutting. I think that our third and fourth graders will be able to cut these, but our younger kids may need a little help from the parents. Notice I used my un unicorn one as a stencil and traced it with a pencil first. That made sense. Same process for this one. There was a lot of cutting, making sure that when you go to use your sponge brush that you are holding that stencil steady in place. I thought this dragon looked really cool on the warm colors for its scales and a dark blue on the outside. It's always best that when you're doing a silhouette to use a darker color than the colors of your original painting. Notice I've used blues and purples for most of the paintings, but sometimes you can use white as a very, very beautiful contrast to the colors in the background. I hope you had a lot of fun making art with me tonight. I cannot wait to see how unique, different, amazing, and creative your paintings are. Please don't forget to share those paintings with me by taking a picture of that and sending it to my email. Then we're going to make a super cool slideshow of all the paintings you've made during our awesome PTO sponsored paint night. Thank you so much for coming and stay creative, my Aiken artist.